Hello and welcome to the Investing Iguana, where we talk about all things money and how to make it work for you. I'm your host, Iggy, and today we're going to discuss a very important topic that affects all of us living in Singapore, aging. Yes, you heard me right. Aging is not just a personal issue, but a national one. Singapore is facing an aging population due to increased life expectancy and decreasing birth rates. By 2035, it is estimated that around a third of Singaporeans will be aged 65 and above, while the median age is expected to rise from 39.7 in 2015 to 53.4 in 2050. As of 2022, around 17.6% of the population is aged 65 and above, and by 2030, around 1 in 4 citizens, or 23.8%, will be aged 65 and above. The old age dependency ratio per 100 residents has risen from 13.5 in 2010 to 23.4 in 2020. The number of citizens aged 80 and above has increased by more than 70% from 2012 to 132,000, making up 3.7% of the population. The current retirement age of 62 may no longer be tenable when close to half the population is expected to be aged 65 years or older by 2050. That's a lot of numbers, I know. But what do they mean for us as individuals and as a society? How can we prepare ourselves for the challenges and opportunities that come with aging? And how can we invest wisely for our golden years? In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the seven key challenges of aging in Singapore and some tips on how to overcome them. These are 1. Healthcare costs 2. Retirement income 3. Housing needs 4. Social isolation 5. Intergenerational harmony 6. Lifelong learning, and 7. Productive aging. Let's start with the first challenge, healthcare costs. Healthcare costs. As we age, we tend to need more medical care and services, such as consultations, medications, tests, surgeries, and hospitalizations. These can add up to a significant amount of money over time, especially if we have chronic conditions or disabilities. According to the Ministry of Health, MOH, healthcare spending in Singapore is projected to increase from $22 billion in 2019 to $39 billion in 2030. This is due to factors such as aging population, rising demand for healthcare services, higher expectations of quality care, and advances in medical technology. To cope with the rising healthcare costs, the government has introduced various schemes and subsidies to help Singaporeans pay for their medical bills. These include a MediShield Life, a basic health insurance plan that covers all Singaporeans and permanent residents for large hospital bills and selected costly outpatient treatments. B CareShield Life, a long-term care insurance plan that provides monthly payouts for life for those who become severely disabled. C MediSave, a compulsory savings scheme that allows Singaporeans and permanent residents to use their CPF savings for their own or their dependents' health care expenses. D. Medifund, an endowment fund that provides additional financial assistance for needy Singaporeans who face difficulties paying their medical bills after receiving government subsidies and drawing on other means of payment. E. CHAS, a scheme that provides subsidies for lower- and middle-income Singaporeans who visit participating general practitioners, GPs, and dentists for common illnesses, chronic conditions, and dental procedures. F. Pioneer Generation Package, a package that provides special benefits for Singaporeans who were aged 16 and above in 1965. These include additional subsidies for outpatient care, annual MediSave top-ups, MediShield Life premium subsidies, and cash payouts for long-term care. And G. Merdeka Generation Package, a package that provides similar benefits as the Pioneer Generation Package for Singaporeans who were born from 1950 to 1959. These schemes and subsidies are meant to help Singaporeans cope with their healthcare costs, but they are not enough by themselves. We also need to take personal responsibility for our own health and well-being. Some tips on how to do this are, 1. Adopt a healthy lifestyle, eat well, exercise regularly, avoid smoking and excessive drinking, manage stress, and get enough sleep. 2. Go for regular health screenings, detect health problems early, and seek treatment promptly. 3. Plan ahead for your health care needs, estimate your future health care expenses, and set aside enough savings or insurance coverage to pay for them. 4. Seek appropriate care, 
Choose the most suitable and cost-effective healthcare provider for your condition, such as a GP, a polyclinic, or a hospital. 5. Compare prices and quality. Shop around for the best value and quality of healthcare services and ask for itemized bills and receipts. Alright, let's move on to the second challenge, retirement income. Retirement income. As we live longer, we also need to save more for our retirement. According to a survey by HSBC, Singaporeans expect to retire at an average age of 62, but their retirement savings are likely to run out after 10 years. This means that they may face a shortfall of 12 years, as the average life expectancy in Singapore is 84. To avoid this scenario, we need to plan ahead and ensure that we have enough income to sustain our desired lifestyle in retirement. There are several sources of retirement income that we can tap on, such as A. CPF Life, a lifelong annuity scheme that provides monthly payouts from the age of 65 for those who have at least $60,000 in their CPF retirement account six months before they reach 65. B. Supplementary Retirement Scheme, SRS, a voluntary savings scheme that allows Singaporeans and permanent residents to contribute up to $15,300 per year and enjoy tax benefits. The savings can be withdrawn any time after the statutory retirement age of 62, subject to a 50% tax concession. C. Cash savings and investments. These include bank deposits, stocks, bonds, unit trusts, and other financial products that can generate income or capital appreciation. D. Property. This includes renting out a room or an entire property, or selling or downsizing a property and using the proceeds for retirement. And E. Work income. This includes continuing to work full-time or part-time after retirement age or starting a business or a freelance career. These sources of retirement income have their own pros and cons, and they may not be suitable for everyone. We need to consider our own needs, preferences, risk appetite, and financial situation before deciding how to allocate our retirement funds. Some tips on how to do this are, 1. Set a realistic retirement goal. Estimate how much you need to spend on your basic and discretionary expenses in retirement and how long you expect to live. 2. Start saving and investing early. The earlier you start, the more time you have to grow your money through compound interest and dollar cost averaging. 3. Diversify your portfolio. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread your money across different asset classes, sectors, markets, and currencies to reduce risk and enhance returns. 4. Review your plan regularly, monitor your progress, and adjust your strategy as your circumstances change. Seek professional advice if needed. Okay, let's move on to the third challenge, housing needs. Housing needs. As we age, our housing needs may change. We may want to live closer to our children or grandchildren, or we may prefer a smaller and more manageable home. We may also need to modify our home to make it more elderly friendly and accessible. To meet our changing housing needs, we have several options, such as A. Right sizing. This involves selling our existing flat and buying a smaller one that suits our needs and budget. We can use the Silver Housing Bonus Scheme to receive a cash bonus of up to $30,000 if we use some of the proceeds from the sale to top up our CPF retirement account and join CPF Life. B. Lease Buyback. This involves selling part of the remaining lease of our flat back to HDB and receiving a lump sum payment and a stream of income for life. We can use the Lease Buyback Scheme to receive a cash bonus of up to $30,000 if we use some of the proceeds to top up our CPF retirement account and join CPF Life. C. Renting Out. This involves renting out a spare room or the entire flat to generate income. We can use the Rent Out Scheme to receive a cash bonus of up to $20,000 if we use some of the rental income to top up our CPF retirement account and join CPF Life. D. Moving In With Family. This involves living with our children or other relatives who can provide care and support. We can use the Enhanced CPF Housing Grant to receive a grant of up to $80,000 if we buy a resale flat with or near our parents or married child. And E. Moving to a retirement village. This involves living in a community of seniors who share common interests and activities. We can use the Retirement Village Scheme to receive a grant of up to $30,000 if we buy a unit in a retirement village that meets certain criteria. These options have their own advantages and disadvantages, and they may not be available or affordable for everyone. 
we need to consider our own preferences, lifestyle, health, family situation, and financial ability before deciding how to manage our housing needs. Some tips on how to do this are, tip 1, assess your current and future housing needs. Think about what kind of home you want to live in, where you want to live, who you want to live with, and how much you can afford. Tip 2, explore your options. Compare the different options available and weigh their pros and cons. Seek advice from HDB or other agencies if needed. Tip 3. Plan ahead. Don't wait until you face a crisis or an urgent need to make a decision. Start planning early and take action when you are ready. Alright, let's move on to the fourth challenge, social isolation. Social isolation. As we age, we may lose some of our social connections due to retirement, relocation, illness, death, or other reasons. This can lead to social isolation, which is the lack of meaningful and satisfying relationships with others. Social isolation can have negative effects on our physical and mental health, such as increased risk of depression, anxiety, cognitive decline, and mortality. To prevent or overcome social isolation, we need to maintain and expand our social network and engage in meaningful activities. There are many ways to do this, such as a. Joining a senior activity center. This involves visiting a center that provides various programs and services for seniors, such as health talks, exercise classes, hobby groups, befriending services, and outings. b. Volunteering. This involves giving back to the community by contributing our time, skills, and experience to a cause or an organization that we care about. c. Learning something new. This involves taking up a course or a hobby that interests us and helps us to acquire new knowledge or skills. D. Traveling. This involves exploring new places and cultures and meeting new people. And E. Staying in touch. This involves keeping in contact with our family and friends through phone calls, messages, video calls, or face-to-face -face visits. These activities can help us to stay socially connected and active, as well as to enrich our lives and enhance our well-being. Some tips on how to do this are, Tip 1. Be proactive. Don't wait for others to reach out to us. Take the initiative to make new friends and join new groups. Tip 2. Be open-minded. Don't limit ourselves to people who are similar to us. Be willing to interact with people who are different from us in terms of age, race, religion, or background. Tip 3. Be supportive. Don't just focus on our own needs and problems. Be ready to listen and help others who may need our support or advice. Okay, let's move on to the fifth challenge, intergenerational harmony. Intergenerational Harmony As we age, we may face some challenges in relating to the younger generations, such as our children, grandchildren, or colleagues. We may have different values, beliefs, expectations, or communication styles. We may also have conflicts or misunderstandings over issues such as living arrangements, caregiving responsibilities, or financial matters. To foster intergenerational harmony, we need to respect and appreciate the diversity and contributions of each generation. We also need to communicate and cooperate effectively with each other. There are some ways to do this, such as a. Sharing our stories and experiences. This involves telling the younger generations about our life journey, our achievements and challenges, our hopes and dreams, and our wisdom and advice. B. Listening to their perspectives and opinions. This involves being curious and interested in what the younger generations have to say, their aspirations and concerns, their passions and hobbies, and their views and suggestions. C. Learning from each other. This involves exchanging knowledge and skills with the younger generations, such as teaching them about our culture and history, or learning from them about technology and trends. D. Working together. This involves collaborating with the younger generations on projects or causes that benefit the society or the environment, such as volunteering, fundraising, or campaigning. And E. Having fun together. This involves enjoying activities or events with the younger generations that bring joy and laughter, such as playing games, watching movies, or celebrating festivals. These ways can help us to build mutual understanding and respect, as well as to strengthen our bonds and relationships with the younger generations. Some tips on how to do this are, tip 1, be flexible, don't be rigid or stubborn about our preferences or habits. Be willing to adapt and compromise when necessary. Tip 2, be respectful, don't be judgmental or critical of the younger generations. Be polite and courteous when interacting with them. Tip 3, be positive, don't be pessimistic or cynical about the future. 
Be optimistic and hopeful when talking to them. All right, let's move on to the sixth challenge, lifelong learning. Lifelong learning. As we age, we may face some challenges in keeping up with the changing world, such as new technologies, new skills, new knowledge, or new opportunities. We may also feel bored or stagnant if we stop learning and growing. To overcome these challenges, we need to embrace lifelong learning as a way of life. Lifelong learning is the continuous and self-motivated pursuit of learning for personal or professional development. It can help us to stay relevant and competitive, as well as to enrich our lives and enhance our well-being. There are many ways to engage in lifelong learning, such as a. Reading. This involves reading books, magazines, newspapers, or online articles that interest us or inform us about various topics and issues. b. Watching. This involves watching videos, documentaries, webinars, or online courses that teach us or inspire us about various subjects and skills. C. Listening. This involves listening to podcasts, audiobooks, radio programs, or lectures that educate us or entertain us about various matters and fields. D. Attending. This involves attending classes, workshops, seminars, or conferences that offer us formal or informal learning opportunities and experiences. And E. Participating. This involves participating in clubs, societies, communities, or networks that provide us with social or professional learning interactions and connections. These ways can help us to acquire new knowledge and skills, as well as to discover new interests and passions. Some tips on how to do this are, tip 1, be curious, don't be afraid or reluctant to learn new things. Be eager and enthusiastic to explore and experiment with different forms and sources of learning. Tip 2, be self-directed, don't depend on others to tell us what to learn or how to learn. Be proactive and independent in setting our own learning goals and plans. And tip 3, be reflective, don't just absorb information passively. Be active and critical in processing and applying what we learn. Okay, let's move on to the seventh and final challenge, productive aging. Productive aging. As we age, we may face some challenges in finding meaningful and satisfying roles and activities that make use of our talents and abilities. We may also feel unappreciated or undervalued by the society or the economy. To overcome these challenges, we need to pursue productive aging as a way of life. Productive aging is the involvement of older adults in activities that produce goods or services or that have social value. It can help us to contribute to the society and the economy, as well as to fulfill our personal and professional aspirations. There are many ways to engage in productive aging, such as a. Working. This involves continuing to work full-time or part-time in our current or new jobs, or starting our own businesses or freelance careers. b. Volunteering. This involves giving back to the community by contributing our time, skills, and experience to a cause or an organization that we care about. C. Mentoring. This involves sharing our wisdom and guidance with the younger generations who can benefit from our insights and advice. D. Advocating. This involves speaking up for ourselves or others who face issues or challenges that affect our well-being or rights. E. Creating. This involves expressing ourselves or inspiring others through artistic or creative pursuits, such as writing, painting, singing, or dancing. These ways can help us to utilize our potential and capabilities, as well as to achieve our goals and dreams. Some tips on how to do this are, tip 1, be confident, don't doubt or underestimate ourselves. Be proud and assertive of our strengths and achievements. Tip 2, be adaptable, don't resist or reject change. Be flexible and resilient in coping with new situations and challenges. Tip 3, be purposeful, don't settle or stagnate. Be ambitious and motivated in pursuing our passions and missions. And that's it for today's podcast. I hope you learned something useful and interesting about the seven key challenges of aging in Singapore and some tips on how to overcome them. Aging is inevitable, but it doesn't have to be a burden or a problem. It can be an opportunity and a blessing if we prepare well and live well. If you enjoyed this video, Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos on money and investing. Also, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about aging in Singapore or any other topics you want me to cover in the future. Thank you for watching the Investing Iguana, and I'll see you in the next video.
Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay wealthy.